So today we're going to do a full review and teardown of the Mega AVO 835 Multimeter. This one's got a few surprises in store, so let's get started. So you won't be surprised to discover the box has got six sides, it's got a picture on the front, the name of the product on the top, and the item inside. Okay, so let's have a look what we've got. We've got the uh, magnetic strap. This is an option. It's about £14. And that strap's on the back of the, of the meter there, so you can stick it on anything that's metal. You've got the optional bag. This again, a bit expensive for what it is. It's £20. Came with it. We've got the... Uh, inside the box we should have the probes. Silicon probes. Those are the British standard ends on them, so they're quite a, a small end. And then you can take the little plastic covers off, and underneath there you've got the little banana blood fittings. Now these are the nickel style probes, not my favourite type of probe in the world. I'd rather have the gold plated ones, but that's what you get in the box. To be honest, they're no worse than anything you'd get from Fluke. And there's your little K-style thermal probe. Again, pretty standard stuff. This uh, comes with any meter that has uh, temperature readings, it's just plugged in the front, and they're standard connectors. It's true RMS, it's got a vibrant LCD display, it's auto range and auto hold with a 10,000 count resolution and it's IP54 water and dust protected. Additionally there's also an 800Hz low pass filter and low impedance switching. One of the smartest features you'll notice on the AVO 835 is that it features safety protected terminals that present and hide the sockets preventing you from plugging the probes in incorrectly. The first setting measures voltage, AC, DC and AC plus DC, which combines the two. The next function measures the frequency of the incoming signal. Then we have phase rotation and sequence detection, which enables the connection of three phase power in the correct sequence. Next, we can measure resistance and inductance. Now, everyone's favourite test the continuity buzzer. Let's see how it stacks up with these, uh, these probes. Oh, come on. No, 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 no. Come on, Mega. I know you can do better than this. Don't leave this rubbish in the box. And that's all I have to say about that. So for the rest of this review, I'm going to continue with some proper probes. They're not expensive probes, just £5 probes that are gold-plated. And they just make a massive difference. You know, why build a really good product and then let it down with lousy probes? Just because Fluke put rubbish cables in the box doesn't mean Mega should. There's capacitance and diode measurement, and this also features smart capacitance, which will safely discharge a charged capacitor. Then we have temperature measurement with a range of minus 20 degrees centigrade to plus 1000 degrees centigrade. There's wireless AC voltage detection selectable with sensitivity of high or low. Now as we switch over to current measurement for both AC, DC and frequency, you can also see that the probes have actually changed their input selection. So first we have amps. And the second switch will take us to milliamps, which is for continuously testing anything that's less than 100 milliamps. Again, you can see the probe input selections changed. So 
So removing the battery compartment is just the case of removing two captive screws with a flathead screwdriver. Then to get to the fuses you just remove the other six screws and those are just self tappers. And as standard it comes out the box with two AA batteries included. Good to see we've also got threaded inserts in the body. Inside you've just got basic EMI shielding. And the first thing that strikes you when you look at the board is it's absolutely impeccably presented. The solder joints are perfect, there's no signs of any bodge wires or anything like that. It's a really nice presented piece of kit. It's good to see that when you take the lid off you can actually see that there's been some pride of ownership in building this. Mega features advanced input protection. It's got everything you'd expect to see on a Cat4 safety rated meter. All the uh, input protection's there and it certainly doesn't disappoint. In the battery compartment there looks to be a USB programmable port. I'm assuming that's to program the STM32 and if that's the case that really could open the door for some hacking potential. Obviously that's a bit of speculation but it'd be nice to see what the community could put together. <laughs> They've got a nice quality Cyrus Tech dual front end, which gives all the features and functionality of the multimeter. It gives the proper 10,000 count resolution. Really good decision to use the Type T1794 precision resistor network. It's the best way of getting the, the highest accuracy, and that's usually what's missing on the cheaper meters. So there you go, I think they've made the right decisions on the component selection. I think for the price, it's bang on the money. The aspirations are clearly for the Fluke 875, and the build quality is every bit what you'd expect in a, in a premium product. It's a really nice design. To remove the main board, you need to undo the four screws that hold the binding posts in place, and then there's just four little clips at the top. And the rear of the switch is basically a bit like a hybrid between the Fluke 875 but with the plastic centre part of the 17B and the shielding around the switch looks very similar to what you'd find on a Fluke 875. The threaded binding posts are basically the same as a Fluke 17B. So holding the fascia, the transfers around the dial seem very high quality, it doesn't appear like they're going to wear off anytime soon. And inspecting the rear of the mode switch I noticed a rubber washer that looks like it's for IP54 sealing. Just glancing at the board, you can notice that the binding posts are actually secured in two places. That should really improve reliability long term. There's that really nice thick film precision resistor hybrid. And there's loads of plastic blast protection around the mode switch. The buttons appear to be a soft rubber silicon. They have a nice feel to the touch. But I think they could benefit from being a little bit firmer compound. And reassembling it's just the inverse of taking it apart. So trying to trick the switch a few times and be a bit rough with it, I never encountered any issues with it going into the wrong input selection. It always worked first time, every time. One of the things I just don't get is that when you use the hand strap, if you have it strapped into your hand, then you're not going to be able to use both the probes together properly. When the strap's in place, you can't use the kickstand. So it means you either have to have a choice between using the hand strap or the kickstand. You can't do both at the same time. Just for fun I decided to see what the Mega Red looked like in a rubber plastic case. Let me know what you think in the comments. Do you think we solved most of its shortcomings? things we really like about the product are that it's got an amazing clear display, 
It's got awesome input protection. It's got great component selection. Really like the choice of components they've used. High build quality. Really good feature count. It's British designed. It's got high accuracy. Smart capacitance feature. Comes with a three year guarantee. And it's got hacking potential. And what we didn't like, Unfortunately, the supplied probes are poor. There's no rubber exterior protection. There's no built-in probe storage and the accessories have got limited appeal. Unfortunately, when you switch it off and on again, it doesn't remember the last function you used, which is kind of frustrating. So the scores are as follows. For build quality, we're giving it nine. Safety protection, 10. Component selection, nine. Features, seven. Supplied accessories, four. Value for money, eight and a highly recommended overall result of 8. And as always, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to follow me on Instagram, it's EVMYT. And if you follow me on Twitter, at EVMYT1, please like and share and subscribe. And thank you for your support. Bye.